Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to explain to you how the new animation system works in RPG Builder 1.1. Before getting started, I just want to let you know that you are not forced to use it, obviously. It is not a replacement, it is just a new option for you. Some of you might not need such a sophisticated um, animation system for your characters and uh, you might want to stick to the more traditional way which is just to use one animator and you can do that without any problem. I'm just going to quickly explain how you would do so. So uh, in this case, this is the new animator controller for RPG Builder 1.1. And as you can see, um, it has a lot more animations than before, uh, a lot more things set up. It also looks a lot cleaner. And um, if you wanted to just stick to this and not use the override system, which is what I'm going to explain in a bit, I would suggest you to just select it, duplicate it, and then you can go in it and one by one replace your animation here. And it will work totally fine. Just assign it to your character and that's it. Now, this video is about showing you how in RPG Builder 1.1, you can now completely swap animation based on many different settings. So for example, what I'm showing you here, is that we have our character here is uh he doesn't have any weapon equipped and he is not in combat now if i am in combat um, i'm using the key to swap from in and out of combat right um so if i swap to combat you can see that the idle animation is now changing but this system is not only about changing one or two animation this system is about changing every existing animation in this animator um, controller and so that you have full control over every single one of these based on a few settings the first one being like i just said in and out of combat as you can see the uh, working animation is also going to change now there is one more thing which is probably the coolest one is that you can also change animations based on the weapon types that you have equipped so right now i don't have any weapon i'm playing the um kind of like uh, unarmed uh, idle combat animation if i now equip the 200 axe you can see that i am playing the 200 axe idle same for the staff and same for the bow and as you can see uh, they are also seamlessly swapping the movement uh, animation so that's very cool and i repeat once again it's not only about idle and movement it's also about abilities which i'm going to show you right now so for example here i have this cleave ability right and if I use it with uh, the staff, well, the staff has a chance to knock back. That's why he went back. But if I use this with the staff, you can see this kind of staff animation, right? Now, if I equip the uh, 200 axe, it's the same ability, just a different animation. And the bow is going to do a kick. And if I now go back to no weapon, I can just play a punch animation. So already, I think you have a pretty clear idea how um, of how amazing this new system is and how easy it is to use. Concerning how easy it is to use, that's the part I'm going to explain right now. And like I said, it is using the Unity um, system, which is called Animator Controller Overrides. And these are what you can see right here. So the way you have to uh, see that is instead of having multiple character animator controller like this one, so this is our animator controller, right? All the overrides are based on this animator, okay? Uh, what override does is, um, if I'm selecting the human rest override here, as you can see at the top, it's um, you can drag and drop an animator. In this case, I drag and drop this one, right? Uh, which is the one we use as a template. Now, as you can see, what it's going to do is it's going to list every single ability, uh, not ability, animation that exists in this controller. So for example, um, let's say we look at the combat layer here. We have melee attack 1, melee attack 2, melee attack 3. As you can see, we can find them here. Melee attack 1, melee attack 2, melee attack 3. So um, all of these are listed. And what you can do is literally simply drag and drop or select whatever animation you want here. And whatever you slot here is going to replace the base animation of the controller when this override is active. If you leave the, um, the field empty, so for example, here you have melee attack 2 and melee attack 3 do not have anything assigned. In this case, it is going to play the default one, which is directly inside this um, animator controller. Okay, So whatever you assign here by default is going to be the default animation. In RPG Builder, actually, the provided one, I don't assign any real animation in this one. I only have real animation in the override. These only have fake animation clips. And uh, what I mean by fake is that these are just a names. 
and a type of animation clip, but they have nothing, no animation in them. And the reason I did that is because when we select an override, this, the name of the animation clips that are in the base animator, which this one, is what is going to be used here to build the list. So pretty much those animation clip here that I assign everywhere are just a way for us to um, easily uh, visualize what animation we're dealing with here. So we have range attack, run forward, and so on. So um, I suggest for sure to override those, otherwise you will have your character playing uh, a weird animation like going in the ground or going in typos or whatever. So that's pretty much it. Now, um, as you can see here, we have human rest override and human combat override, which are those two. So right now we're playing the human rest override. I'm going to select the um, player so we can see. So look at here, we have the human rest override and combat and rest and combat extra. It's swapping uh, easily. Now we have the great axe rest, great axe combat and so on. You understand the concept, it's very easy. Um, now, to create new overrides, I would highly suggest you to duplicate it instead of creating it from scratch. But if you wanted to create one from scratch, you just right click, create animator override controller. Um, but in this case, I would really suggest you to just select one and duplicate it that way it's going to be perfectly set up for you and it will also save you some time uh, so that you don't have to uh, reassign some of them that you may just want to keep no matter uh, if it's a different weapons or not now um, another thing i want to show you is how to actually set up those override with rpg builder and make sure that rpg builder is going to use the right ones that you want when you want it so the first thing to do is going under uh, general and races and here we have uh, the visual part of the race. And here you have a choice to use dynamic animator or not. If you turn this off, it means that whatever um, animator controller is assigned here on the base uh, prefab is the one that's going to be used and is not going to swap uh, between human rest and human combat, for example. But if you do want those to be dynamic, you just turn this on. And then this lets you assign a, um, an override for the rest and combat state and here once again you can see how cool this is because this lets you use one animator controller so you don't have to tweak the settings all the time or copy or like if you change an animator you have to change it for all your races and so on this is very annoying now you can use one animator controller as a template this one and you can have different overrides for your races okay and now when it comes to the weapons you will go under settings, items, weapon override, and I'm going to um, uh, go maximize. And here you can see that it lets us add new entries, as many as you want, of course. And you can easily select your weapon types here. So weapon types are things you define yourself, of course, in your project. Here, just under weapon types, you can, of course, add as many as you want. Um, in this specific demo, we don't really have like 100 weapons. Um, but in this case, let's say that uh, I added dagger and spell book let me save that now if i will go ahead and add a new entry i could he go here select dagger select require second weapon spell book and now we could assign a different override so you could go ahead here like duplicate this one and call it call it for example dagger spell book whatever of course the name doesn't matter um, and here you could drag and drop them and whenever you save this and um, equip a dagger and spell book your animation will swap completely to the override you created as you can see you don't have to use two weapons of course these ones are set up for one weapon type because there are 200 weapons so if we have a great axe equipped we can't have anything else but in this case we have great axe bow and staff and that's why it is seamlessly swapping um, from all those overrides whenever i equip a weapon so that was pretty much it for the um, like so, well, you know new system and how cool it is, how easy it is, and how like seamless it is to uh, use that. It's very useful for like attack animation and many other things. So um, actually, the other cool thing is that I started using this system for NPCs too in RPG Builder 1.1. Uh, I don't think I'm going to cover this in depth right now, but I'm going to make a um, specific video for NPCs. But as you can see here, um, if we go to uh, Combat and NPCs, and under Prefab Setup, 
here you see that um, they use uh, their own overrides also. So here we have deer, wolf, bear, and even the wyvern, the boss, and so on. They all use one animator template. In this case, this one, NPC animator controller template. And they have their own override. So if I select the deer, we have this animator I just talked about attach. And as you can see, of course, the list is smaller because NPCs have less animations than the player. But as you can see here, we can easily swap attack one, attack two, attack three. Of course, those parameters are up to you, whatever you want uh, those to be. Um, but then uh, we can have just an override. For example, let's say that now I will create a new NPC, which is a tiger or whatever. I will go ahead, duplicate this, call it tiger. And I would drag and drop all my tiger animations here. I sign it to the NPC and that's it. You don't have anything else to do. It's, use, it's going to use this animator as a template and that's it. And it's ready to go. And as you can see, this animator for the NPC is quite clean. Uh, you have the idle, combat idle, a few attack animations. Like I said, you can add anything you want. Run, walking, roaming, get hit, death and stunt. And the boss actually made a new template because it doesn't mean that you have to use only one animator always. You can, of course, have a few animator templates and a few override, each having a reference to their own animator, right? So in this case, this is for the boss from the demo, the Wyvern. Um, and I made a new one because I wanted a few different settings and I also wanted a loop ability, uh, which I am using for the fire breath. So it's doing this kind of like big fire um, kind of like flame for ability in front of uh in front of him so that's it but like i said probably i'm going to make another video on this uh, it might actually be covered in the new like creating an npc video uh so that's it but yeah thank you for watching i hope you like the system let me know if you do in the comment on discord as always and see you in the next video